But I think it's important that we note that in 1980, something happened regarding the Sherlock Holmes stories. I'll let you describe what happened and what the results have been, because we've sure been seeing the name Sherlock Holmes around a lot lately, but your father's name is not attached to it. No, that's very bad. Um, well, in 1980, the um, works came into public domain in this country, and anybody could write whatever they liked, put on any sort of show or anything in this country, and write pastiches using the characters. Uh, this doesn't apply in America, I'm glad to say. Well, thank goodness your laws have been changed fairly recently and quite a number of my father's works are still in copyright and they're in copyright to me. Um, over here um, there have been several pastiches written more and more recently I'm afraid to say and there have been, um, a lot of films have been made. But we, by having a right, a copyright on the film, on my father's works in America, I hope to influence the standard of work that is produced here in England. Because most people want to either publish that work in America afterwards, after it's been published in England, or they want to have it produced on the American stage or, or screen. And I won't give permission for that to be done unless the characters are shown in character and in period and are very well written. Well, for a time, I did allow pastiches to be published on these terms, but always against my inner judgment. And I don't allow it any longer. I allow a certain amount of films and television and cinema if they follow the rules I've just told you about. Let's take as an example The Secret of Sherlock Holmes, now playing at the Wyndham Theatre in the West End here in London. When this project came up, were you consulted at first and if you would follow it from there? Yes, I was. I was consulted very early on in that I was asked to a private view on a Sunday. I was sent the script I heard it on a tape, and uh, I kept in very close touch with the author, Paul, Jeremy Paul, and with the star, Jeremy Brett. And I could see nothing objectionable in it at all. I thought it was a very elegantly written little play, um, fascinating in its way, something that I think would have amused my father greatly. He didn't much mind what liberties were taken on the stage <laughs> within reason, providing they were in good hands, the hands being William Gillette. I don't think he would have been so happy with some other um, actor producers. But um, certainly with the secret of Sherlock Holmes. It's been beautifully handled by people who obviously love Holmes and Watson. And the acting is splendid. Um, Jeremy Brett's been appearing as Holmes in films for the television for a long time now, but his performance has changed beyond measure. Uh, I didn't really like him in the early series. He was far too arrogant and too mannered, too highly strung altogether, whereas Holmes was a very cool character. And um, it, was, it has been wonderful to see the change in him 
and that the last series, instead of being a rather unpleasant man, he became an endearing man, in spite of his conceit, in spite of this, that and the other. He's somebody who you really care about. And I think it's an absolutely great performance. He holds you. I wish I could have been present in his dressing room when you went back to see him. Oh, <laughs> it was a lovely party. <laughs> Very nice to see him again. And such a privilege to meet Watson, because Edward Hardwick is a splendid Watson, just the sort of Watson my father would have envisaged. Unlike Nigel Bruce, who really was the most appalling Watson <laughs> ever. <laughs> I believe he was a very nice man, but Watson was never the old bumbler like that. I mean, Holmes would never have shared digs with a, with a fool. <laughs> <laughs>